Hey guys, I'm Dylan and welcome back to Chiptorials. Today we're going to continue our getting started conversation with a talk about serial communication, the language of microcontrollers. They can say an entire dictionary faster than I can say the word. How does this work? Well, today we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the common types of serial communication, how they operate, and how to set them up on a Cortex-M0 chip. Today we're going to be using the PIC32CMJH00. We'll also use serial communication to talk to the chips on the Curiosity Nano Explorer board. Serial communication is the process of sending data one bit at a time over a channel or bus. There are multiple ways of doing this, but the most popular ones are UR, SPI, and I squared C. They are all processes of taking information from one client to another. These can each vary from a two-wire point-to-point contact to shared buses and addresses. This may not make sense now, but it will here in a few minutes. Let's get into our first one by talking about UART. UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. There are several variations such as EUSART and USART, but the core functionality remains the same. UART is a two-wire communication protocol that enables data transmission and reception by sending messages over a line based on a predetermined clock cycle. This ensures that both devices can send and receive messages at the same speed. You may be wondering, why is this useful? Well, it's the simplest way to get two devices talking. You'll use it for quick messages, terminal communication, or when you need to debug your code and see what's happening inside your microcontroller. It's also great for simulation and prototyping, since you can hook it up to a USB to serial adapter and watch the data flow in real time. Here we are in MPLAB X. I'm showing the kit window to show our updated PIC32CMJH00C Nano start page. Here we have updated links for the user guide and data sheet. And then we can start our project. Here I'm gonna select our device and our newest compiler. And then I'm just going to name this JH Circom Usart. And then we can wait for MCC to open. Hello, welcome back to our project workspace. We're going to be doing a quick Hello World example using our SysTick timer and also our Usart peripheral. So to actually use our peripheral, we're going to be choosing our Circom 1. This is according to the CNano user guide. And we're going to make sure a few settings are correct, like UseArt with internal clock and also our baud rate. We're also going to be making a couple of changes to our pins here. This is also according to our CNano user guide. And the reason why we chose these pins is because it's actually connected to our serial to USB adapter. This is what lets us communicate with our device using data visualizer. And now we can edit our code. We're going to be creating a simple loop that will uh, display hello world every 500 milliseconds. To do this, we're going to be first creating our macro hello world. We're going to call our timer just to start it. And then we're going to also make a use our write message. And then finally, what our delay is going to be. We're using a delay so we don't have to deal with a wall of text. So for just example purposes, it's going to be 500 milliseconds. Once we program, we can hit the DV button at the top, and this will bring up Data Visualizer. Data Visualizer allows you to see and send data via UART packets. Opening here, we can uh, see our data being sent if we choose our COM port. For me, it's COM11. But first, I'm going to verify our baud rate is the same, 115200. I'm going to send it to our terminal, and we can see hello world. I put a screenshot of what the actual UART packet looks like on screen. Now let's talk about I2C, or Inter-Integrated Circuit. I2C is a two-wire protocol, but unlike UART, it's designed for connecting multiple devices on the same bus. One wire for the clock, SCL, and the other is for data, SDA. Each device must have a unique address, but you can talk to many sensors, displays, or memory chips just using the same two pins. Why is I2C useful? 
Well, it's perfect for when you need to connect lots of peripherals without using up all your microcontroller's pins. It's also widely supported. Most sensors and modules you'll find online have I2C built in already. Now let's check out a demo. Here we are back in our project workspace. So here we're going to be doing a quick little demo rotating LEDs using one of our I2C chips. For this we're going to enable our SysTick timer and of course our SIRCOM module. This time we're going to be using SIRCOM2. This is according to our PIC32CMJH00 user guide. And we're also going to be changing the configuration options from USART to I2C master. We're also going to be editing our pins. These pins should be changed according to the CNANO user guide as well. These pins also correlate with the I2C bus on the Curiosity Nano Explorer board. We're going to add in one more pin and this is going to be a GPIO input. This is going to be our onboard switch. I'm adding in the settings that will make it recognizable as a switch such as direction and pull-up resistor. I'm also going to name this SW0, as in switch 0. After this, we're ready to generate our code. I skipped a bit ahead. This is just because it's a somewhat complex example, but this will be posted on MP Lab Discover. Up here, it, I have the I2C unique address for the I.O. expander on the Curiosity Nano Explorer board. Here, I have a custom function to write to this I.O. expander. Shift clicking this function will bring you to the other ones, such as Rotate LED and Rotate Single LED. These are located on the bottom of the main.c. Going back to our main loop, you can see we're actually using these API to constantly update the latch register. After we program, we can check our logic to see what it's actually doing on the I2C side of things. Here we can take a look at the three bytes actually being sent. First, we have a hex 25. This is the unique address of the I.O. expander. This lets the chip know that we're talking to it. Next to that, we have a 0A. This is the specific register of the chip we're talking to, i.e. its latch register. And then finally, DF. This is just a random byte that we sent at the time, and this is what lets it know that we want those specific pins being set. Finally, let's look at SPI, or Serial Peripheral Interface. SPI uses four wires, Serial Data In, SDI, Serial Data Out, SDO, Serial Clock, SCK, and Chip Select, CS. It's designed for high-speed communication between a host device and a client, or maybe a few. Why is SPI useful? Well, it's much faster than I2C and UART, making it ideal for things like memory cards, displays, and fast data transfers. It's also very flexible. You can connect to multiple devices and you can get full duplex communication, meaning data can flow in both ways at the same time. However, it does take more wires than UART or I2C. Those both require two wires, whereas SPI requires four, like I said before. Let's get into the next demo where we can look at an EEPROM fast data transfer. To do this data transfer, we're going to need our SPI peripheral and we're also going to add in a USART peripheral. The USART is going to provide knowledge about what's going on in the chip and it's going to relay it back to us in Data Visualizer. For SPI, all we're going to need to make is the change to SPI Master and SIRCOM Pad 2 for data in pad selection. We're going to want to make sure where Transfer Mode 0 is selected and that's controlled by the SPI clock phase and polarity. We can keep SIRCOM 1 as its default values. And then now we're going to change our pins. First we're going to be changing our RX and our TX to our user. And now we're going to be changing our SPI pins. For your chip select, we can make that a GPIO. And I'm going to name mine EEPROMCS. We're going to make that an output. And now we're ready to generate. Now let's take a look at our code. 
Here we have a couple of includes. This just defines certain functions. We have our success message to let us know when we finish reading and writing. Here we have a write enable and a write disable. This is something that EEPROM needs. And we have a couple of operations, read, write, read, write, busy point. This checks the status of the actual bits and data R. This is a temporary variable that we're gonna use to store information. Here we have a, a function that helps UART send a string, write enable, and then here we're using our operations to write, read, and check the status. Here also in our main loop, we're write enabling, we're writing, and we're writing to a specific channel, hex AAAAAA. We're leaving a hex 52. Once we're done checking the status, we're gonna read that specific channel. We're gonna print our message, and then we're gonna print whatever hex was displayed there. Here we are in data visualizer, and we can see this in action. Let me just program. And there we are with an EEPROM write and read complete with our data displayed as well. Now if we want to take a look at the logic, here we can actually see why SPI is the king of speed. So over here we can see in less than a second all our transactions took place. That includes the write, the read, the check status, that's all happening here. Here's our initial read at AAAA. We're having all this data clocked in on our leading edge, and we're only choosing CS when our clock is going low. Here we can actually see when our status is unbusy, and then we can read our hex 52. When you run into issues with your code, it's important to know how to debug. There are a couple of solutions to this problem already, and MPLAB actually provides you with a couple of debugging and data visualizer tools. You can stream live data from your PIC32CM to your PC. It's perfect for monitoring variables or system behavior in real time. Let's go over some of these and how we can use them in our current examples right now. Welcome back to our I2C example. I think this is a great example to show off our debugging tips. I think the best one to show off at first is watch. So watch is something where you can actually watch your registers or specific variables you have within your code. So for now, we're gonna do rotate register. So if we go back to watch, which we can either click on by clicking the register itself or going to the debug tab up top, we can go here and type in rotate reg and then now we have a view on it. We can also pause our debugging and we can notice that our LED is the same point at which it stopped. We can move around in the code using these buttons, step in, step over, and step into, and this lets you manipulate your code however which way you would want to. Or let's say you want to find a specific issue with a couple of interactions. This lets you go by step by step in the code to find out what's going on. Let's talk about hardware breakpoints. Breakpoints are a debugging feature that allow developers to halt program execution when certain conditions are met, such as accessing a specific memory address or executing a particular instruction. Ours was on rotate single LED. So as soon as we press SW0, here we are, we have activated our breakpoint and our code has halted here. You only have a set number of hardware breakpoints, but you can achieve the same functionality from software breakpoints and you get a lot more of them. So in conclusion and to recap, UART is your go-to for simple point-to-point -point communication and debugging. I2C is perfect for connecting lots of devices with just two wires. SPI is the king of speed for high performance peripherals. And if you're building your next embedded project, understanding these protocols is key. And just for a helpful reminder, all the configurations that we went through in this video is used on all Cortex M0 chips. If you found this video helpful, be sure to stay tuned for future Getting Started videos and look in the description for more resources, like the code examples, our devices we used, all will be linked in the description. Be sure to like and to subscribe and happy coding.